The Western Chalukya Empire ruled most of the Western Deccan, South India, between the 10th and 12th centuries. This Kanadiga dynasty is sometimes called the Kalyani Chalukya after its regal capital at Kalyani, today's Basavakalyan in the modern Bidar district of Karnataka state, and alternatively the later Chalukya from its theoretical relationship to the 6th century Chalukya dynasty of Badami. The dynasty is called Western Chalukyas to differentiate from the contemporaneous Eastern Chalukyas of Vengi, a separate dynasty. Prior to the rise of these Chalukyas, the Rashtrakuta Empire of Manyaheta controlled most of Deccan and central India for over two centuries. In 973, seeing confusion in the Rashtrakuta Empire after a successful invasion of their capital by the ruler of the Paramara dynasty of Malwa, Tailapa II, a feudatory of the Rashtrakuta dynasty ruling from Bijapur region defeated his overlords and made Manyaheta his capital. The dynasty quickly rose to power and grew into an empire under Someshvara I who moved the capital to Kalyani. For over a century, the two empires of southern India, the western Chalukyas and the Chola dynasty of Tanjore fought many fierce wars to control the fertile region of Vengi. During these conflicts, the eastern Chalukyas of Vengi, distant cousins of the western Chalukyas but related to the Cholas by marriage took sides with the Cholas further complicating the situation. During the rule of Vikramaditya VI, in the late 11th and early 12th centuries, the western Chalukyas convincingly contended with the Cholas and reached a peak ruling territories that spread over most of the Deccan, between the Narmada River in the north and Kaveri River in the south. His exploits were not limited to the south for even as a prince, during the rule of Someshvara I, he had led successful military campaigns as far east as modern Bihar and Bengal. During this period the other major ruling families of the Deccan, the Hoysalas, the Sunna Yadavas of Devagiri, the Kakatiya dynasty and the southern Kalachuris of Kalyani, were subordinates of the western Chalukyas and gained their independence only when the power of the Chalukya waned during the later half of the 12th century. The western Chalukyas developed an architectural style known today as a transitional style, an architectural link between the style of the early Chalukya dynasty and that of the later Hoysala Empire. Most of its monuments are in the districts bordering the Tungabhadra River in central Karnataka. Well-known examples are the Kasavisvesvara Temple at Lakundi, the Malakarjuna Temple at Karuvati, the Kalasvara Temple at Bagali and the Mahadeva Temple at Atagi. This was an important period in the development of fine arts in southern India, especially in literature as the western Chalukya kings encouraged writers in the native language Kannada, and Sanskrit. History Knowledge of Western Chalukya history has come through examination of the numerous Kannada language inscriptions left by the kings scholars Sheldon Pollock and Jan Hoban have claimed 90% of the Chalukyan royal inscriptions are in Kannada, and from the study of important contemporary literary documents in Western Chalukya literature such as Gata Yutta in Kannada by Rana and Vikramankadeva Charitam in Sanskrit by Bilhana. The earliest record is dated 957, during the rule of Tailapa II when the western Chalukyas were still a feudatory of the Rashtrakutas and Tailapa II governed from Tartavadi in present-day Bijapur district, Karnataka. The genealogy of the kings of this empire is still debated. One theory, based on contemporary literary and inscriptional evidence plus the finding that the western Chalukyas employed titles and names commonly used by the early Chalukyas, suggests that the western Chalukya kings belonged to the same family line as the illustrious Badami Chalukya dynasty of 6th century, while other western Chalukya inscriptional evidence indicates they were a distinct line unrelated to the early Chalukyas. The record suggests a possible rebellion by a local Chalukya king, Chattagadeva of Banavasi 1-2 2000 province c. 967, in alliance with local Kadamba chieftains. This rebellion however was unfruitful but paved the way for his successor Tailapa II. A few years later, Tailapa II re-established Chalukya rule and defeated the Rashtrakutas during the reign of Karka II by timing his rebellion to coincide with the confusion caused in the Rashtrakuta capital of Manyaheta by the invading Paramaras of central India in 973. After overpowering the Rashtrakutas, Tailapa II moved his capital to Manyaheta and consolidated the Chalukya Empire in the western Deccan by subjugating the Paramara and other aggressive rivals and extending his control over the land between the Narmada River and Tungabhadra River. 
However, some inscriptions indicate that Balagamva in Mysore territory may have been a power centre up to the rule of Someshvara I in 1042. The intense competition between the Kingdom of the Western Deccan and those of the Tamil country came to the fore in the 11th century over the acutely contested fertile river valleys in the Dobe region of the Krishna and Godavari River called Vengi. Modern coastal Andhra Pradesh. The Western Chalukyas and the Chola dynasty fought many bitter wars over control of this strategic resource. The imperial Cholas gained power during the time of the famous king Rajaraja Chola I and the crown prince Rajendra Chola I. The eastern Chalukyas of Vengi were cousins of the western Chalukyas but became increasingly influenced by the Cholas through their marital ties with the Tamil kingdom. As this was against the interests of the western Chalukyas, they wasted no time in involving themselves politically and militarily in Vengi. When King Satishraya succeeded Tailapa II to the throne, he was able to protect his kingdom from Chola aggression as well as his northern territories in Konkan and Gujarat although his control over Vengi was shaky. His successor, Jayasimha II, fought many battles with the Cholas in the south around c. 1020-21 when both these powerful kingdoms struggled to choose the Vengi king. Shortly thereafter in c. 1024, Jayasimha II subdued the Paramara of central India and the rebellious Yadava king Biyama. It is known from records that Jayasimha's son Someshvara I, whose rule historian Sen considers a brilliant period in the western Chalukya rule, moved the Chalukya capital to Kalyani in c. 1042. Hostilities with the Cholas continued while both sides won and lost battles, though neither lost significant territory during the ongoing struggle to install a puppet on the Vengi throne. In 1068 Someshvara I, suffering from an incurable illness, drowned himself in the Tungabhadra River Paramayoga. Despite many conflicts with the Cholas in the south, Someshvara I had managed to maintain control over the northern territories in Konkan, Gujarat, Malwa and Kalinga during his rule. His successor, his eldest son Someshvara II, feuded with his younger brother, Vikramaditya VI, an ambitious warrior who had initially been governor of Gangavadi in the southern Deccan when Someshvara II was the king. Before 1068, even as a prince, Vikramaditya VI had invaded Bengal, weakening the ruling Pala Empire. These incursions led to the establishment of Karnata dynasties such as the Sena dynasty and Varman dynasty in Bengal, and the Nyanadeva dynasty in Bihar. Married to a Chola princess, a daughter of Veera Rajendra Chola, Vikramaditya VI maintained a friendly alliance with them. After the death of the Chola king in 1070, Vikramaditya VI invaded the Tamil kingdom and installed his brother in law, Adirajendra, on the throne, creating conflict with Kulathunga Chola I, the powerful ruler of Vengi who sought the Chola throne for himself. At the same time, Vikramaditya VI undermined his brother, Someshvara II, by winning the loyalty of the Chalukya feudatories, the Hoysala, the Sunna, and the Kadambas of Hangul. Anticipating a civil war, Someshvara II sought help from Vikramaditya VI's enemies, Kulathunga Chola I and the Kadambas of Goa. In the ensuing conflict of 1076, Vikramaditya VI emerged victorious and proclaimed himself king of the Chalukya Empire. The 50 year reign of Vikramaditya VI, the most successful of the later Chalukya rulers, was an important period in Karnataka's history and is referred to by historians as the Chalukya Vikrama era. Not only was he successful in controlling his powerful feudatories in the north Kadamba Jayakeshi II of Goa, Silhara Boja and the Yadava king and south Hoysala Vishnuvardhana, he successfully dealt with the imperial Cholas whom he defeated in the Battle of Vengi in 1093 and again in 1118. He retained this territory for many years despite ongoing hostilities with the Cholas. This victory in Vengi reduced the Chola influence in the eastern Deccan and made him emperor of territories stretching from the Kaveri River in the south to the Narmada River in the north, earning him the titles Permatadeva and Tribhuvanamala Lord of Three Worlds. The scholars of his time paid him glowing tributes for his military leadership, interest in fine arts and religious tolerance. Literature proliferated and scholars in Kannada and Sanskrit adorned his court. Poet Bilhana, who immigrated from far away Kashmir, eulogized the king in his well-known work Vikramankadeva Karita. Vikramaditya VI was not only an able warrior but also a devout king as indicated by his numerous inscriptions that record grants made to scholars and centers of religion. The continual warring with the Cholas exhausted both empires, giving their subordinates the opportunity to rebel. 
In the decades after Vikramaditya VI's death in 1126, the empire steadily decreased in size as their powerful feudatories expanded in autonomy and territorial command. The time period between 1150 and 1200 saw many hard-fought battles between the Chalukyas and their feudatories who were also at war with each other. By the time of Jagadhikamala II, the Chalukyas had lost control of Vengi and his successor, Tailapa III, was defeated by the Kakatiya king Prola in 1149. Tailapa III was taken captive and later released bringing down the prestige of the western Chalukyas. Seeing decadence and uncertainty seeping into Chalukya rule, the Hoysalas and Sunas also encroached upon the empire. Hoysala Narasimha I defeated and killed Tailapa III but was unable to overcome the Kalachuris who were vying for control of the same region. In 1157 the Kalachuris of Kalyanis under Bayala II captured Kalyani and occupied it for the next 20 years, forcing the Chalukyas to move their capital to Anagiri in the present-day Darwad district. The Kalachuris were originally immigrants into the southern Deccan from central India and called themselves Kalanyaraporavaradasavaras. Bayala II and his ancestors had governed as Chalukya commanders over the Kharhad 4000 and Tardavadi 1000 provinces overlapping region in present-day Karnataka and Maharashtra with Mangalavada or Anagiri as their capital. Bayala II's Chikology record of 1157 calls him Mahapujabala Chakravarti, emperor with powerful shoulders and arms, indicating he no longer was a subordinate of the Chalukyas. However the successors of Bayala II were unable to hold on to Kalyani and their rule ended in 1183 when the last Chalukya Sayan, Someshvara IV made a final bid to regain the empire by recapturing Kalyani. Kalachari king Sankama was killed by Chalukya general Narasimha in this conflict. During this time, Hoysala Veera Balala II was growing ambitious and clashed on several occasions with the Chalukyas and the other claimants over their empire. He defeated Chalukya Someshvara IV and Suna Biyama V bringing large regions in the Krishna River Valley under the Hoysala domains, but was unsuccessful against Kalachuris. The Sunas under Biyama V were on an imperialistic expansion too when the Chalukyas regained Kalyani. Their ambitions were temporarily stemmed by their defeat against Chalukya General Barma in 1183, but they later had their vengeance in 1189. The overall effort by Someshvara IV to rebuild the Chalukya Empire failed, and the dynasty was ended by the Sunna rulers who drove Someshvara IV into exile in Banavasi 1189. After the fall of the Chalukyas, the Sunas and Hoysalas continued warring over the Krishna River region in 1191, each inflicting a defeat on the other at various points in time. This period saw the fall of two great empires, the Chalukyas of the Western Deccan and the Cholas of Tamilakam. On the ruins of these two empires were built the kingdoms of their feudatories whose mutual antagonisms filled the annals of Deccan history for over a hundred years, the Pandyas taking control over some regions of the erstwhile Chola Empire. <laughs> Administration The Western Chalukya kingship was hereditary, passing to the king's brother if the king did not have a male heir. The administration was highly decentralized and feudatory clans such as the Alupas, the Hoysalas, the Kakatiya, the Sunna, the Southern Kalachari and others were allowed to rule their autonomous provinces, paying an annual tribute to the Chalukya emperor. Excavated inscriptions record titles such as Mahapradana chief minister, Sandhivagrahika, and Dharmadakari chief justice. Some positions such as Tadiyadandanayaka commander of reserve army were specialized in function while all ministerial positions included the role of Dandanayaka commander, showing that cabinet members were trained as army commanders as well as in general administrative skills. The kingdom was divided into provinces such as Banavasi 12000, Nolambavadi 32000, Gangavadi 96000, each name including the number of villages under its jurisdiction. The large provinces were divided into smaller provinces containing a lesser number of villages, as in Belavola 300. The big provinces were called Mandala and under them were Nadu further divided into Campanyas groups of villages and finally a Bada village. A Mandala was under a member of the royal family, a trusted feudatory or a senior official. Tailapa II himself was in charge of Tardavadi province during the Rashtrakuta rule. Chiefs of mandalas were transferable based on political developments. 
For example, an official named Bamaneya administered Banavasi 12000 under King Someshvara III but was later transferred to Halasige 12000. Women from the royal family also administered Nadus and Campanyas. Army commanders were titled Mahamandaleshwaras and those who headed a Nadu were entitled Nadugovda. The Western Chalukyas minted punch marked gold pagodas with Kannada and Nagari legends, which were large, thin gold coins with several varying punch marks on the obverse side. They usually carried multiple punches of symbols such as a stylized lion, Shri in Kannada, a spearhead, the king's title, a lotus, and others. Jayasimha II used the legend Sri Jaya, Someshvara I issued coins with Sri Tre Lo Ka Mala, Someshvara II used Bhuvaneka Mala, Lakshmideva's coin carried Sri Lasha, and Jagadhikamala II coinage had the legend Sri Jagade. The Alupas, a feudatory, minted coins with the Kannada and Nagari legend Sri Pandya Dhanamjaya. Lakundi in Gadig district and Sudi in Darwad district were the main mints their heaviest gold coin was Gadianaka weighting 96 grains, Drama weighted 65 grains, Kalanju 48 grains, Kasu 15 grains, Manjadi 2.5 grains, Akam 1.25 grains and Panna 9.6 grain. Economy <inaudible> 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 Agriculture was the empire's main source of income through taxes on land and produce. The majority of the people lived in villages and worked farming the staple crops of rice, pulses, and cotton in the dry areas and sugarcane in areas having sufficient rainfall, with areca and beetle being the chief cash crops. The living conditions of the laborers who farmed the land must have been bearable as there are no records of revolts by the landless against wealthy landlords. If peasants were disgruntled the common practice was to migrate in large numbers out of the jurisdiction of the ruler who was mistreating them thereby depriving him of revenue from their labor taxes were levied on mining and forest products and additional income was raised through tolls for the use of transportation facilities the state also collected fees from customs professional licenses and judicial fines records show horses and salt were taxed as well as commodities gold textiles perfumes and agricultural produce black pepper paddy spices beetle leaves palm leaves coconuts and sugar land tax assessment was based on frequent surveys evaluating the quality of land and the type of produce Chalukya records specifically mention black soil and red soil lands in addition to wetland dry land and wasteland in determining taxation rates Key figures mentioned in inscriptions from rural areas were the Gavundas officials or Gudas. The Gavundas belonged to two levels of economic strata, the Praja Gavunda people's Gavunda and the Prabhu Gavunda Lord of Gavundas. They served the dual purpose of representing the people before the rulers as well as functioning as state appointees for tax collection and the raising of militias. They are mentioned in inscriptions related to land transactions, irrigation maintenance, village tax collection, and village council duties. The organization of corporate enterprises became common in the 11th century. Almost all arts and crafts were organized into guilds, and work was done on a corporate basis. Records do not mention individual artists, sculptors, and craftsmen. Only in the regions ruled by the Hoysala did individual sculptors etch their names below their creations. Merchants organized themselves into powerful guilds that transcended political divisions, allowing their operations to be largely unaffected by wars and revolutions. Their only threat was the possibility of theft from brigands when their ships and caravans traveled to distant lands. Powerful South Indian merchant guilds included the Manigramam, the Nagaradar and the Anjuvanam. Local guilds were called Nagaram, while the Nanadesis were traders from neighboring kingdoms who perhaps mixed business with pleasure. The wealthiest and most influential and celebrated of all South Indian merchant guilds was the self-styled Ainuruvar, also known as the 500 Svamis of Ayavalapura Brahmins and Mahahanas of present-day Ihole, who conducted extensive land and sea trade and thereby contributed significantly to the total foreign trade of the empire. It fiercely protected its trade obligations Vira or law of the noble merchants and its members often recorded their achievements in inscriptions prasasti. 500 such excavated Prasasti inscriptions, with their own flag and emblem, the bull, record their pride in their business. Rich traders contributed significantly to the king's treasury through paying import and export taxes. 
The edicts of the Ihol Svamis mention trade ties with foreign kingdoms such as Shara, Pandya, Malia, Malaysia, Maga, Kashal, Saurashtra, Kurumba, Cambodia, Cambodia, Lada, Gujarat, Parasa, Persia, and Nepal. Traveling both land and sea routes, these merchants traded mostly in precious stones, spices and perfumes, and other specialty items such as camphor. Business flourished in precious stones such as diamonds, lapis lazuli, onyx, topaz, carbuncles and emeralds. Commonly traded spices were cardamom, saffron, and cloves, while perfumes included the by-products of sandalwood, bedellium, musk, civet and rose. These items were sold either in bulk or hawked on streets by local merchants in towns. The western Chalukyas controlled most of South India's west coast and by the 10th century they had established extensive trade ties with the Tang Empire of China, the empires of Southeast Asia and the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad, and by the 12th century Chinese fleets were frequenting Indian ports. Exports to Song Dynasty China included textiles, spices, medicinal plants, jewels, ivory, rhino horn, ebony and camphor. The same products also reached ports in the west such as Dofar and Aden. The final destinations for those trading with the west were Persia, Arabia and Egypt. The thriving trade center of Saraf, a port on the eastern coast of the Persian Gulf, served an international clientele of merchants including those from the Chalukya Empire who were feasted by wealthy local merchants during business visits. An indicator of the Indian merchants' importance in Saraf comes from records describing dining plates reserved for them. In addition to this, Saraf received aloe wood, perfumes, sandalwood and condiments. The most expensive import to South India were Arabian horse shipments, this trade being monopolized by Arabs and local Brahmin merchants. Traveller Marco Polo, in the 13th century, recorded that the breeding of horses never succeeded in India due to differing climatic, soil and grassland conditions. Culture Religion The fall of the Rashtrakuta Empire to the Western Chalukyas in the 10th century, coinciding with the defeat of the Western Ganga dynasty by the Cholas in Gangavadi, was a setback to Jainism. The growth of Virashaivism in the Chalukya territory and Vaishnava Hinduism in the Hoysala region paralleled a general decreased interest in Jainism, although the succeeding kingdoms continued to be religiously tolerant. Two locations of Jain worship in the Hoysala territory continued to be patronaged, Shravanabelagola and Kambadahali. The decline of Buddhism in South India had begun in the 8th century with the spread of Adi Shankara's Advaita philosophy. The only places of Buddhist worship that remained during the Western Chalukya rule were at Dambal and Balagavi. There is no mention of religious conflict in the writings and inscriptions of the time which suggest the religious transition was smooth. Although the origin of the Virashaiva faith has been debated, the movement grew through its association with Basavanna in the 12th century. Basavanna and other Virashaiva saints preached of a faith without a caste system. In his Vachanas, a form of poetry, Basavanna appealed to the masses in simple Kannada and wrote, Work is worship. Kayakave Kailasa. Also known as the Lingayats, worshippers of the Linga, the universal symbol of Shiva, these Virashivas questioned many of the established norms of society, such as the belief in rituals and the theory of rebirth, and supported the remarriage of widows and the marriage of unwed older women. This gave more social freedom to women, but they were not accepted into the priesthood. Ramanujacharya, the head of the Vaishnava monastery in Srirangam, traveled to the Hoysala territory and preached the way of devotion, Bhakti Marga. He later wrote Sribhashya, a commentary on Bhattarayana Brahmasutra, a critique on the Advaita philosophy of Adi Shankara. Ramanujacharya's stay in Melkote resulted in the Hoysala king Vishnuvardhana converting to Vaishnavism, a faith that his successors also followed. The impact of these religious developments on the culture, literature, and architecture in South India was profound. Important works of metaphysics and poetry based on the teachings of these philosophers were written over the next centuries. Akka Mahadevi, Alama Prabhu, and a host of Basavanna's followers, including Chenna Basava, Prabhudeva, Siddharama, and Kandaguli Kasiraja wrote hundreds of poems called Vachanas in praise of Lord Shiva. The esteemed scholars in the Hoysala court, Harihara and Raghavanka, were Virashivas. 
This tradition continued into the Vijayanagar Empire with such well-known scholars as Singuraja, Malinaria, Lakana Dandesa and other prolific writers of Virashaiva literature. The Saluva, Taluva and Aravidu dynasties of the Vijayanagar Empire were followers of Vaishnavism and a Vaishnava temple with an image of Ramanujacharya exists today in the Vithalapura area of Vijayanagara. Scholars in the succeeding Mysore kingdom wrote Vaishnavite work supporting the teachings of Ramanujacharya. King Vishnuvardhana built many temples after his conversion from Jainism to Vaishnavism. Society The rise of Virashaivism was revolutionary and challenged the prevailing Hindu caste system which retained royal support. The social role of women largely depended on their economic status and level of education in this relatively liberal period. Freedom was more available to women in the royal and affluent urban families. Records describe the participation of women in the fine arts, such as Shalukya Queen Chandala Devi's and Kalachuris of Kalyani Queen Sovala Devi's skill in dance and music. The compositions of 30 Vachana women poets included the work of the 12th century Virashaiva mystic Akka Mahadevi, whose devotion to the Bhakti movement is well known. Contemporary records indicate some royal women were involved in administrative and martial affairs such as Princess Akadevi, sister of King Jayasimha II who fought and defeated rebellious feudals. Inscriptions emphasize public acceptance of widowhood indicating that sati a custom in which a dead man's widow used to immolate herself on her husband's funeral pyre though present was on a voluntary basis. Ritual deaths to achieve salvation were seen among the Jains who preferred to fast to death salakana, while people of some other communities chose to jump on spikes shulabrahma or walking into fire on an eclipse. In a Hindu caste system that was conspicuously present, Brahmins enjoyed a privileged position as providers of knowledge and local justice. These Brahmins were normally involved in careers that revolved around religion and learning with the exception of a few who achieved success in martial affairs. They were patronized by kings, nobles and wealthy aristocrats who persuaded learned Brahmins to settle in specific towns and villages by making them grants of land and houses. The relocation of Brahmin scholars was calculated to be in the interest of the kingdom as they were viewed as persons detached from wealth and power and their knowledge was a useful tool to educate and teach ethical conduct and discipline in local communities. Brahmins were also actively involved in solving local problems by functioning as neutral arbiters panchayat. regarding eating habits Brahmins Jains Buddhists and Shaivas were strictly vegetarian while the partaking of different kinds of meat was popular among other communities Marketplace vendors sold meat from domesticated animals such as goats sheep pigs and fowl as well as exotic meat including partridge hare wild fowl and boar People found indoor amusement by attending wrestling matches or watching animals fight such as cock fights and ram fights or by gambling. Horse racing was a popular outdoor pastime. In addition to these leisurely activities, festivals and fairs were frequent and entertainment by traveling troops of acrobats, dancers, dramatists and musicians was often provided. Schools and hospitals are mentioned in records and these were built in the vicinity of temples. Marketplaces served as open-air town halls where people gathered to discuss and ponder local issues. Choirs, whose main function was to sing devotional hymns, were maintained at temple expense. Young men were trained to sing in choirs in schools attached to monasteries such as Hindu Matha, Jain Pali and Buddhist Vihara. These institutions provided advanced education in religion and ethics and were well equipped with libraries Saraswati Bandara. Learning was imparted in the local language and in Sanskrit. Schools of higher learning were called Brahmapuri or Gataka or Agrahara. Teaching Sanskrit was a near monopoly of Brahmins who received royal endowments for their cause. Inscriptions record that the number of subjects taught varied from 4 to 18. The four most popular subjects with royal students were economics Varda, political science Dandaniti, Veda Trayi, and philosophy Anvikshiki, subjects that are mentioned as early as Kautilya's Arthashastra. Literature <inaudible> 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 The Western Chalukya era was one of substantial literary activity in the native Kannada, and Sanskrit. In a golden age of Kannada literature, Jain scholars wrote about the life of Tirthankaras and Virashaiva poets expressed their closeness to God through pithy poems called vachanas. 
Nearly 300 contemporary vachanakaras vachana poets including 30 women poets have been recorded. Early works by Brahmin writers were on the epics, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavata, Puranas and Vedas. In the field of secular literature, subjects such as romance, erotics, medicine, lexicon, mathematics, astrology, encyclopedia etc. were written for the first time. Most notable among Kannada scholars were Rana, grammarian Nagavarma II, minister Durga Sima and the Virashaiva saint and social reformer Basavana. Rana who was patronized by King Tailapa II and Satishraya is one among the three gems of Kannada literature. He was bestowed the title, Emperor among Poets. Kavi Chakravathi by King Tailapa II and has five major works to his credit. Of these, Sahasabhima Vijayam of 982 in Shampu style is a eulogy of his patron King Satishraya whom he compares to Bhima in valour and achievements and narrates the duel between Bhima and Duryodhana using clubs on the 18th day of the Mahabharata war. He wrote Ajitha Purana in 993 describing the life of the second Tirthankara, Ajitanatha, Nagavarma II, poet laureate of King Jagadhikamala II made contributions to Kannada literature in various subjects. His works in poetry, prosody, grammar and vocabulary are standard authorities and their importance to the study of Kannada language is well acknowledged. Kavyavalakana in poetics, Karnataka Bhashabhushana on grammar and Vastakosa lexicon with Kannada equivalents for Sanskrit words are some of his comprehensive contributions. Several works on medicine were produced during this period. Notable among them were Jagadala Samanathas Karnataka Kalyana Karaka. A unique and native form of poetic literature in Kannada called Vachanas developed during this time. They were written by mystics, who expressed their devotion to God in simple poems that could appeal to the masses. Basavana, Akka Mahadevi, Allama Prabhu, Chanabasavana, and Siddharama are the best known among them. In Sanskrit, a well known poem Mahakavya in 18 cantos called Vikramankadeva Karita by Kashmiri poet Bilhana recounts in epic style the life and achievements of his patron king Vikramaditya VI. The work narrates the episode of Vikramaditya VI's succession to the Chalukya throne after overthrowing his elder brother Someshvara II. The great Indian mathematician Bhaskara II born C. flourished during this time. From his own account in his famous work Siddhanta Siramani c. 1150, comprising the Lilavati, Bijaganita on algebra, Goladaya on the celestial globe and Graganita on planets Bijata Bidda modern Bijapur was his native place, Manasalasa or Abhilashatartha Chintamani by King Someshvara III 1129 was a Sanskrit work intended for all sections of society. This is an example of an early encyclopedia in Sanskrit covering many subjects including medicine, magic, veterinary science, valuing of precious stones and pearls, fortifications, painting, music, games, amusements etc. While the book does not give any of dealt topics particular hierarchy of importance, it serves as a landmark in understanding the state of knowledge in those subjects at that time. Someshwara III also authored a biography of his famous father Vikramaditya VI called Vikraman Kabudaya. The text is a historical prose narrative which also includes a graphic description of the geography and people of Karnataka. A Sanskrit scholar Vijnaneshwara became famous in the field of legal literature for his Matakshara, in the court of Vikramaditya VI. Perhaps the most acknowledged work in that field, Matakshara is a treatise on law commentary on Yajnavalka based on earlier writings and has found acceptance in most parts of modern India. An Englishman Colebrook later translated into English the section on inheritance giving it currency in the British Indian court system. Some important literary works of the time related to music and musical instruments were Sangeeta Chudamani, Sangeeta Samayasara and Sangeeta Ratnakara. Topic. Architecture The reign of Western Chalukya dynasty was an important period in the development of Deccan architecture. The architecture designed during this time served as a conceptual link between the Badami Chalukya architecture of the 8th century and the Hoysala architecture popularized in the 13th century. The art of the Western Chalukyas is sometimes called the Gadig style. After the number of ornate temples they built in the Tungabhadra River Krishna River Dobe region of present-day Gadag district in Karnataka. 
The dynasty's temple building activity reached its maturity and culmination in the 12th century with over a hundred temples built across the Deccan, more than half of them in present day central Karnataka. Apart from temples, the dynasty's architecture is well known for the ornate stepped wells which served as ritual bathing places, a few of which are well preserved in Lakundi. These stepped well designs were later incorporated by the Hoysalas and the Vijayanagara Empire in the coming centuries. The Kasavisvesvara Temple at Lakundi Gadig District, the Dada Basapa Temple at Dambal Gadig District, the Malakarjuna Temple at Karuvati Bellary District, the Kalasvara Temple at Bagali Devanjare District, the Siddhisvara Temple at Haveri Haveri District, the Amritasvara Temple at Anajeri Darwad District, the Mahadeva Temple at Atagi Kapil District, the Kaitabheshvara Temple at Kubator, and the Kitareshvara Temple at Balagavi are the finest examples produced by the later Shalukya architects. The 12th century Mahadeva temple with its well executed sculptures is an exquisite example of decorative detail. The intricate, finely crafted carvings on walls, pillars, and towers speak volumes about Chalukya taste and culture. An inscription outside the temple calls it Emperor of Temples Devalaya Chakravarti, and relates that it was built by Mahadeva, a commander in the army of King Vikramaditya VI. The Kadaraswara Temple 1060 at Balagavi is an example of a transitional Chalukya Hoysala architectural style. The Western Chalukyas built temples in Badami and Ihole during their early phase of temple building activity, such as Malakarjuna Temple, the Yelama Temple, and the Bhutanatha group of temples. The Vimana of their temples tower over the shrine is a compromise in detail between the plain stepped style of the early Chalukyas and the decorative finish of the Hoysalas. To the credit of the Western Chalukya architects is the development of the lathe-turned pillars and use of soapstone chloritic schist as basic building and sculptural material, a very popular idiom in later Hoysala temples. They popularized the use of decorative kurtamukha demon faces in their sculptures. Famous architects in the Hoysala kingdom included Chalukyan architects who were natives of places such as Balagavi. The artistic wall décor and the general sculptural idiom was Dravidian architecture. This style is sometimes called Karnata Dravida, one of the notable traditions in Indian architecture. Language <inaudible> 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 The local language Kannada was mostly used in Western Kalyani Shalukya inscriptions and epigraphs. Some historians assert that 90% of their inscriptions are in the Kannada language while the remaining are in Sanskrit language. More inscriptions in Kannada are attributed to Vikramaditya VI than any other king prior to the 12th century, many of which have been deciphered and translated by historians of the Archaeological Survey of India. Inscriptions were generally either on stone or copper plates This period saw the growth of Kannada as a language of literature and poetry, impetus to which came from the devotional movement of the Virashivas called Lingayatism who expressed their closeness to their deity in the form of simple lyrics called vachanas. At an administrative level, the regional language was used to record locations and rights related to land grants. When bilingual inscriptions were written, the section stating the title, genealogy, origin myths of the king and benedictions were generally done in Sanskrit. Kannada was used to state terms of the grants, including information on the land, its boundaries, the participation of local authorities, rights and obligations of the grantee, taxes and dues, and witnesses. This ensured the content was clearly understood by the local people without any ambiguity. In addition to inscriptions, chronicles called Vamshavalis were written to provide historical details of dynasties. Writings in Sanskrit included poetry, grammar, lexicon, manuals, rhetoric, commentaries on older works, prose fiction, and drama. In Kannada, writings on secular subjects became popular. Some well-known works are Chandambudi, a prosody, and Karnataka Kadambari, a romance, both written by Nagavarma I, a lexicon called Ranakanda by Rana 993, a book on medicine called Karnataka Kalyanakarika by Jagadala Somanatha, the earliest writing on astrology called Jatakatalaka by Sridharacharya 1049, a writing on erotics called Madanakatalaka by Chandraraja, and an encyclopedia called Lokapakara by Chavandaraya II 1025. See also Rashtrakutas Chola dynasty Vikramaditya VI 
Kulathunga Chola the first Balagavi equals equals notes